In this HVACR training video, we're going over how to pull a vacuum on an air conditioning system step-by-step -step in order to allow refrigerant into the tubing. We're going to be pulling a vacuum without a manifold gauge set, and we're only using these two hoses, our 5CFM vacuum pump from Hillmore. We're also using a vacuum gauge. So this is a digital vacuum gauge, so we'll be able to see incremental changes in our vacuum as we're removing air, nitrogen, water vapor out of the system. So we'll be able to monitor it there. We need to get a vacuum below 500 microns. We're going to be using valve core removal tools because these are rated down to 20 microns in order to hold the vacuum. We're also using these in order to pull out the valve cores here so they are not an obstruction while we're pulling our vacuum. And I use three valve core removal tools. I'll show you why in a little bit. I also like to utilize two ratcheting service wrenches and then we just have our hold back adjustable wrench and pliers. So now we're going to get started by removing our valve cores. So step one is that we're going to remove the valve cores from these ports right here. Now the whole point of this is that if this system has been brazed already, it's been nitrogen pressure tested and the system held pressure and there's no leaks, that's when you're going to do your vacuum procedure. And so up here at these top caps, after the vacuum is done, we're going to be turning these counterclockwise in order to allow refrigerant into the system. But the very first step that we're going to do is we're going to use the valve core removal tools. And I'm just going to use the back end right now in order to take the valve core out of the, out of the port right here. And so we're just going to use that and unscrew it. We're removing the valve core in order to just connect right on to the VCRT, which is the valve core removal tool. So there's not going to be any restriction coming through here or through this. So we're going to be able to pull a vacuum much faster by removing these valve cores from the ports right here. And so we're just going to screw that on. And on this one, since it's the suction side, I'm going to add another valve core removal tool, VCRT, to the side. Now there's no valve core right here and I'm just going to temporarily shut this valve and I'm going to add our second valve core removal tool to this port and this is where we're going to hook the vacuum gauge onto. So I'm just going to keep all my valves shut so I don't have any humidity entering into this tubing and right here is where I'll attach my vacuum gauge. So I'm going to next move over to this side here. The other thing is these uh, Hillmore VCRTs have a magnet on the end so you can just put them right onto the system and you're not going to end up getting dirt into these or anything like that. I like to put them right on the top of the unit. On this side I could do the same thing and unscrew my stem and take the valve core out just with this tool right here. But in this case I'm just going to take it out by pulling the valve core through the tool just for the sake of doing it. So what you first do is you pull that rod out like that and then you mount your tool onto the port. Then you push your stem in you push it until you feel the tool stem grab the valve core and then you just unscrew it counterclockwise until you hear a clicking basically it's it's off of the thread then you unscrew this and then you have your valve core you want to remove these because you don't want to end up pulling a vacuum through the tiny little hole right here at the end uh, so that would be a major restriction on your vacuum it would slow it down uh, very much. So we're going to just have this tool on here. I'm going to turn these valves temporarily until we get ready to put our hoses on. I'm also going to remove this top cap. Both of these service valves are front seated and they're holding back the refrigerant charge in this outdoor unit. So this unit got shipped with refrigerant in it and we have to prepare the line set tubes in order for the refrigerant to enter in. So that's what we're doing right now with our vacuum procedure. Next, we're gonna attach our hoses. So here we have a 3 8 hose with a quarter inch adapter. So on both of these sides of the hose, we have a quarter inch connector going to the valve core and to the vacuum pump. Here on this hose, we have a 3 8 hose with a 3 8 adapter or connector. So we're going to attach that right on to the, the vacuum pump. And the, the thing is, the strategy is to use the least amount of connections as possible in order to connect your, your hoses. So the secret is to have a, a vacuum pump with a T like this one right here. And we're just going to snug these up. We're going to put our vacuum gauge on. 
So now we're going to check all of our connections. We want to make sure that we're snug on everything. Now these vacuum pumps have a gas ballast, so you could open this up a little bit and let the system run to about 10,000 microns and then go ahead and shut that. But since that's on the back here and you can't see it, I'm just going to turn the system on and just let it run without the gas ballast. So this is just to get the initial air out of the system so it doesn't have to get fully pumped through the vacuum pump wheel. Because remember, any contaminants that come out of this system in the, the air, the water vapor, that gets trapped in the vacuum pump wheel. Now we'll open our valves and we're going to turn this vacuum pump on. What I'm going to be shooting for is about 200 microns and then what we'll do is we'll turn the vacuum pump off and we'll be isolating the hose here and the hose here during what's called the standing vacuum test, also referred to as a decay test, and we're going to see if our vacuum is going to hold. We want to make sure to not have the vacuum go up above 500 microns and so if it rises and it continues to rise and that means that we have a problem. So let's just go ahead and see if we get down to 200 microns and then we'll valve this off and see where we're at. EPA 608 regulations state that you have to get a system down below 500 microns. You saw that we did that pretty early on. I'm just doing extra vacuum to just really, really uh, make the, the inside of the tubing uh, very dehydrated in order to allow the refrigerant into the tubing so we'll have a real nice system when we're done. So the point was that I was closing and then reopening these uh, while the system was running just to get any air that was trapped at the ball at the ball valve here and here and there just trying to get rid of that uh, but you can see our vacuum's holding pretty well. We're at 186 microns. Just took a couple minutes. That was it. And this is three-quarter line set and three, so three-quarter vapor line and three-eighths liquid line. And so we have about about 20 feet, about 15 to 20 feet to the indoor evaporator coil. So it looks like we're doing pretty good. We're going to start our 10-minute standing vacuum test and see if this vacuum level rises. So as you can see, our vacuum after the 10 minute standing vacuum test only rose say a total of 14 microns. So we're good to go. So that could have just been due to some equalization within the tubing. I mean, it is not continuing to rise, signaling that there's a leak. It's not rising, then plateauing, rising, then plateauing, signaling that there's, that there's water melting and exerting force as a vapor inside the system. We are good to go. We're fully dehydrated. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold my vapor surface valve with my wrench. And we're going to open the suction line first. So before I do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this valve to the off position. If you see any change in the micron level, just realize that you're changing the amount of room inside that tube. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to... I'm trying to protect the vacuum gauge from any oil that could go up in there and contaminate the sensor. And so we can just turn that off now. We have positive pressure in the system. Well, when you come up, you don't come up all the way. There is no back seat with these service valves. And so once it gets harder to turn, you just stop. There's only a little O-ring inside, not, not a back seat position. So next we're gonna come over here. 
I'm going to hold this one as well. And that's it. Now, since this valve is in the off position, you can disconnect this. If you'd like, you see there's no pressure coming out. We have positive pressure, and I did not have any refrigerant or refrigerant wheel come up into the sensor, which could potentially contaminate any uh, digital vacuum gauge. So we're just going to take that to the side, and now we can go ahead and disconnect our hoses. The next thing that we're gonna wanna do is put the valve course back in and so how you do that is you just set this in there. Then you open this up. Now once you turn that valve, what you want to do is just let a little bit of air out of here. So you don't want to press any air into the system. And so then what you do is you press your thumb inwards and you turn it in clockwise until it gets hard to turn. And that's it. Then what we're going to do is we're going to turn this to the off position and we're going to take this off. We will be leak checking the end cap right here. I'll show you how to do that in a sec. Let's go ahead and put our other valve core in that side. Next what we're going to do is we're going to put these two caps on with a little hole in the end. So these are little test caps and we're going to use anti-corrosive bubble leak detector on the little hole to see if we have any bubbles form. So if a bubble forms, that's gonna tell you that you have a leak over at your valve core over here, uh, but if this does not bubble out or glisten or move, then we can go ahead and take this off and we're not gonna have any refrigerant leaking out. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. I don't see any bubble forming there, so it looks like we're good, but we'll give it about a minute. And then we can take our valve core removal tools off of those ports. So we're good to go. We can go ahead and take our valve core removal tools off, and then we can put our locking caps on. Next, because this is installed in the public area, we're going to put locking caps on. Next, we'll put our top caps on the service valves. So we have our refrigerant in the tubing, our service valves are in the open position, our valve cores are not leaking, and our locking caps are on, so this portion of the system install is done. You can turn this system on and check the refrigerant charge while the unit's running, but this should be pretty close to accurately charged because there's about 15 to 20 foot where the line set. And this outdoor unit comes with enough refrigerant in it for the outdoor unit, 15 foot where the line set, and the evaporator coil that's installed inside the building. And so once again, you can just turn the system on just to verify that and check the refrigerant charge. So I hope this video has helped. And if you want to learn about any of the Hillmore tools used in this video, I have them linked down in the description section below. And if you want to learn about preparing a system for refrigerant, checking the refrigerant charge or troubleshooting, make sure to check out our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning book, our thousand question workbook. And we also have quick reference cards that can be used out in the field. So make sure to check all these out over on Amazon and also at our website at acservicetech.com where we have a bunch of other free resources such as the articles, the quick tips, the calculators, and the quizzes. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.